free to identifying vulnerabilities, to reporting them, to make sure that they're actually fixed. So previously, I used to do medical medicine. And so what I'm going to talk about is a framework for how you go from doing something that's totally unrelated to something that you want to do. If I tell you specifics on what I need to get where I am, you're going to end up where I am, not where you want to be. So that doesn't make sense, right? So what I want to talk about is a framework. And my framework is very similar to Red Team, for those of you who are getting into things and learning about the sort of different sides of information security. So on the Red Team side, the attack side, it always starts with recon. And it's followed up with vulnerability analysis. So I see there's a problem here. I see there's a problem here. What's maybe my best way to get in, right? And then that is then followed by exploitation. Okay? This is a really good vulnerability that's going to make me far. And then the next thing I want to talk about is a life hack that kind of helped me out. It's going to seem a little bit okay, but it's one of the things that I did to get where I am. And the third thing is a word of, um, a word to the wise. So, uh, again, I did clinical medicine uh, in my undergraduate. Uh, actually, sorry, coming back up. I started doing sports medicine when I was 14, interning at high school, and then also a two-year college. And then I went on to undergraduate, and I got certified as a national EMT in Washington State. And then I graduated with a BS in kinesiology, emphasis in athletic training, got my certification, which is national, and then also got licensed in Washington State. And then I went on to graduate school work in health and human performance, and I got certified by the American College um, sports medicine and exercise physiology. So at first, uh, also with the military, with uh, Marine Corps at Littleton, also down at San Diego in the Country Depot, I worked at a private cost company covering all of their events. So I put in an injury eval, and then I actually set up uh, all the documentation and processes for how to take care of those people, as well as working at a university. So how did I kind of learn about MOSET from clinical medicine? So when I was in school and I had computer problems, I am well known for breaking things down, is I, I don't know what to do, right? So yes, it's not my thing, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So I would go to all my computer friends and be like, I don't know, help me, right? They're like, oh, they do like, oh, okay, I got my file back here. And they're like, oh, you're not like that, like, turn this straight. Like, okay, cool, that's, that's nice, right? And then one day they're like, Here's a terminal. I was like, oh, that's that's kind of dark and scary. Uh, not for me. <laughs> but eventually, in grad school, after grad school, so after grad school, uh, I was looking for work, and so I did some clinical work at one of the local high schools. And then there was a tech company that was like, hey, we need someone who knows where the computer is, but we really want someone who has a clinical background, like. I know what a computer is, I, I, I can do the clinical talk. So from there, I learned about what is information security. So how then did I really dig into what I want to do now? Learn about the industry is the first thing. So for me, I learned about tech before I got to my concept. And the job that I was in, a lot of the work was actually compliance driven. I didn't realize it when I initially started until I started to, having to learn. So, those ways to learn, obviously, you're starting with searches. Um, there are a lot of different sites that will talk about it. Talk about uh, like Indie, Monster. Um, all the schools also have some career driven um, sites as well to help people up. So, these are all good places to get into. And what you're looking for are different jobs within the field that might interest you, right? So I want to be a sysadmin, but what is that, right? I don't know, I've never even heard of that. What's the data cell company? I don't know what they do, right? So you're looking out for what are these different things to kind of get an idea of what you might want to do. And then one of the things to keep in mind is, okay, well, this is a junior position, and then that's a senior position, right? So you don't want to be a junior for the rest of your life. Eventually, you want to move your way up. So. Those are also something you want to consider when you're looking at all the different jobs. Certification-wise, um, this gets to be a dicey topic. Some people are like, screw the certifications, they don't mean crap. 
if you're trying to get into an industry that you know nothing about, have zero work experience, you need some way to demonstrate that you have interest and you're learning. So the first cert I actually got was um, a CompTIA A+, right? Doesn't really mean I can tech a whole lot, it means I can maybe do some support and stuff, but it's a start and it shows, hey, I was doing full clinical, now I'm starting to learn about tech stuff. So, so we can answer this. Uh, not necessarily bad, but you do want to look at what jobs if you're trying to get into. Some of them do require it. A lot of the government jobs, they only recognize CompTIA. So there might be this other certification out here, but it depends on what your use case is and you want to go after. So keep that in mind when you're looking around. Um, different organizations in industry. So ISSA, no loss, those are big names. SANS is another big name, right? These are all big organizations. So this is another body as well, right? So these are the organizations that are also putting out information for everybody else. They're the ones who are also setting standards. So you want to get to know what is what's in the industry, what's the information that's there. So big advice when you don't know what a job is. So I read about what a assignment is. I don't really know what that means. So, my friend here, he's done his assignment work. He seems really happy in his job, right? So, sit down, have a chat with someone who's doing the work, actually likes what they do, and ask them, like, what is it like day in, day out? What is the best part of your job? What's sort of the worst part of your job? And then, what some people might not do, or it's harder to do, is find someone who actually isn't very happy at their job currently, and say, hey, why don't you don't really like doing networking anymore? Right? What, what is it that bugs you so much? Because you want to get both sides to know what exactly that job that you think you're interested in really is. Because the person who's really happy is going to paint you rainbow magic unicorns. And that might not be realistic. Right? You want to know what the downside of whatever you might be interested in. So, I highly encourage you to try and find both sides. So learning resources, again, if you're going online, you can search. There's a lot of free resources out there, a lot of sites, a lot of people have blogs up. That's one of the ways, super easy. There's free and paid resources. So probably two most popular ones, Cyberry, free one, and IT Pro TV. And you do get what you pay for. So if you're trying to re-career and you're going to learn information, you need to get it from a quality source, right? And whether a source is good or not, you might not know without having to do a lot of research. So in general, library is good, but maybe the content might not be as polished. And it really depends. Some of it's really good, some of it's not. I've seen both. But when you're getting paid content that's been vetted, it tends to be a little bit better. SANS is super expensive. I'm taking one of those classes. You know what? Your content's great. Their lab works, and they have all the details about. Okay, we know this problem is going on. This is how you do the fix, and when you follow it, it totally works, and they have good support. So it's something that you want to consider about. Not everybody's going to be able to pay, and that's understandable. You'll have to try and figure out the free. I personally really like IQ Pro TV. Um, we'll be talking more about it later. I don't get paid to uh, talk about that, but that's just what I like. Um, Conferences, clubs, and meetups. Those are great ways to learn free stuff. So, obviously, you guys are all up here. Hopefully, some of you guys are attending workshops, um, going to all the talks. The CTF, that's free. You can get help from people too on the CTFs to learn how to do things. Clubs, um, that's another way to make, uh, share knowledge as well. So, I was just part of the Linux, Linux user group when I was in undergrad to try and learn how to do Linux stuff. And actually, the first thing I learned to do was how to do DVD, and I DVD'd my hard drive, and it was terrible. All my friends were like, oh, that's like a rite of passage. Everybody's done that. So I was like, great, check, step one. Um, meetups, tons of meetups as well. Uh, if you're local in the South Bay area, SBU Off is one. ISSA LA, they have a table. Uh, ISSA, I think OC also has a chapter. OWASP is highly active in all the different counties as well. If you're further north, 
and as well, and then all the local deaf groups, um, they're all pretty active. So you can find them uh, uh, mostly on Twitter. And then, of course, there's always one. So look up what you're interested in. There you go. So how do you get in? So now, now you know kind of what the lay of the land looks like. You have an idea of where you want to go. So you want to leverage your existing skills. And I talked about what we shared earlier. So, so this gentleman here, you said you were doing aerospace project management technical Op operations. I'm sorry, operations. So there's some management skills that go with that, right? And when you work on a team, there's always going to be management related needs. So for me, when I transferred into it, I've done documentation before. There's a tech writing job specific, right? So that's one thing that transferred. I have also done um, a lot of Compliance work. So, whether I was doing it with the tech company or within operations and medical, I already understand there's a whole side of compliance that needs to be done. I just need to know what it is, what I'm doing now, right? So, th those are kind of carryovers that you can talk about. Um, we talked about certifications. Oh, demonstrating uh, your skills. So certification also, we're going to talk about for demonstrating skills, uh, presentations. So I, again, really encourage Linux user group. It tends to be a little bit more low key if you make any mistakes. Linux user are really helpful in the way, oh no, you're, you're totally wrong on that. It's actually like this. And that's cool, because you still get to learn and you still get to say, hey, I was sharing what I've learned. And it shows that you are actively going out and learning as well. Git. So if you're getting into more of the coding side of things, if you want to get into more as a developer, having a GitLab or a GitHub that's public where people can review your code is very helpful. It was still helpful for me as well to demonstrate that. That's where I posted some of my presentations. That's where I started posting some of my scripts, learning how to use the tool that's definitely used in industry. So our team, we use GitLab and GitHub. I got to know how to use both. I already do it on my own stuff. Great. And then volunteer. So if you don't know anything and you don't want to, you want to skip over the really difficult hiring process, but you need to get experience, one of the ways is to volunteer. So Scale has a huge network team. They lay out almost a mile of cabling. Okay, so someone's got to terminate those cables, someone's got to set up those routers. Right? Someone's got to set up all those APs. If you don't know how, they're very willing to teach you. So that's a good way to say, hey, I spent like 40 hours helping them get all of this set up. I know how to do this. And you have someone who can vet you. Networking. That networking with people. Right? Networking with people. So computer clubs, conferences, great way. I went to nearly every conference I could go to. Conferences are expensive. How do you get there? Volunteer. Super simple. Not everything is going to be technical. For conferences, uh, back when I was helping with Sean one, I need operations for them, which really means I make sure everything that needs to get done is getting done. So if it's taking out the trash, terminating the tables for the CTF, finding a speaker, those are not technical things, but I'm getting to know people in the industry and they can at least say, hey, you know something. Or you're really good at this, and you can help in this area too. So you're going to get a lot of guidance there. And then just generally asking for help. Like I, I didn't know that there was something called a technical area. I've never had one in medical. You don't do that. It's like, what is your cert? Okay, good. There's nothing beyond that. I don't ask. Oh, do you know how to do an ACLE doc? Uh, yeah, you should. That's what you're certified. So drawing in the future. This is the life hack. So there was a TED talk I came across shortly beforehand. And what you're doing is you're going to take a piece of paper and you draw your current state. And generally it's, I'm not happy here, right? And it doesn't have to be fancy and artistic. I did straight up sort of stick figures. I'm sorry, I was going to try and get that in here. I can find it. I moved recently, so, but I was going to share that. But initially I was really unhappy where I was. In medical, there's a ceiling. Whatever you've studied, that's where you are. Outside of that is going to be management stuff. And I really like clinical work, so I was kind of stuck where I was. So that's one of the reasons I decided to go for the info set. 
because you can keep going, just a much higher ceiling. Um, so you're drawing your current state, and it's showing really where you are, why you're not happy. And then on the other side, you go, this is where I want to go. This is my goal. And a lot has been shown that when you see that, when you can visualize it, you believe it, and you work towards it. A lot of times, people, even facing death, are unable to change themselves. So if you want to do a re-career, that's usually not a life-threatening thing. It's going to be really hard to make that change. So this is one of the things that I did to help me get there. And I've actually looked at my future every single day. Shame, guilt, and vulnerability. So this is my word of caution is when you get there, when you're arriving, you might not feel like you belong. And so you might feel some shame, you might feel some guilt. Okay? Um, and you'll, you'll definitely feel vulnerable every time you make a mistake. Like, oh, man, it's real again. It sucks. Right? So, how do you deal with that? Because that is very closely related to imposter syndrome. And that's very prevalent within information security. A lot of people have talked to you super technical and they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm being. I'm a new. Dude, you're not a new. You've been doing this for 15 years. You're very really good at what you did. So, shame, guilt, and vulnerability, you need to find a way to manage that. The way you manage that is with a good support system. Yeah. Um, this might be people in your life. This might be balancing work and personal life. At some point, you need to make a delineation and go, no, it's 5 o'clock, I'm done, that's it. I can only do so much in a day. Or you have friends that you can go to and go, hey, Mario, there's another really crappy day, we only have a couple and talk it out and just let it all up. Or sometimes you're going to be the ones who come over and go, oh dude, I think you need a hug. Right? And you hug it out. And then make sure you thank the people around you. Right? Let them know that you appreciate them for being there. This is my list of people who help get me where I am. And I will talk more my parents. After that, it's my sister, brother, and all and a couple of other people. Some of these people are actually here at the conference. Some of these people are on the conference to help me. So make sure you say thank you for them helping you, supporting you, and getting you through. So questions, gripes, moans, groans. Um, let me take a picture of this. I'm on Twitter. I'm not particularly active, but hit me up. 